so much for joining us for WIS News Primetime. I'm Hannah Burbank. Every weekday at 730, we'll be here to tell the untold stories of kindness, community, and hope across the Midlands. And tonight we see proof that a mother's love for her child can never be defined by distance in between. Ahead of Mother's Day on Sunday, the Camille Graham Correctional Institute gave a few of their inmates the chance to connect with their children and grandchildren in the form of a personalized storybook. Our Justin Wall shows us how these incarcerated parents capture their love in a recording and why incentives like these could decrease quick inmate turnaround. Thank you for helping me all through my day. Thank you for listening to me while when I pray. You help me feel brave enough to face my fear. You remind me when I need you, you're always here. Near or far, distance doesn't define a mother's love for their child. As Mother's Day approaches, many parents and grandparents won't have the chance to spend the day with their loved ones. For those who must do their time behind prison walls, there is still a chance for them to send a piece of their heart and voice to those who need it most. In my opinion, what this does is it creates a connection with the child and the mother or grandmother. Ahead of the holiday, a number of inmates at the Camille Graham Correctional Institute were given the opportunity to feel close to their children and grandchildren, even from behind prison walls. Formerly known as A Mother's Voice, the Riley's Readers Program allows incarcerated parents to record storybooks for their children. But it's something they can send home and say, you know, uh, I'm behind bars, love can't stop, all the bars can't stop my love for you. No matter where I am, I'm always gonna love you and support you and hopefully it may break a, a cycle of, um, of coming to prison. The South Carolina Department of Corrections offers up the chance across 21 of their institutions. To qualify, an inmate must be free of discipline for at least six months and have a loved one eight years old or younger, an incentive that hopefully brings these incarcerated parents to a certain realization. When you make a decision and, and you end up in prison, it doesn't affect just you, but you can also miss out on a, a, a child growing up and being there to support them. And, you know, what do we do as parents? We protect our children. A chance to learn, a chance to understand, and a chance to heal from a past mistake. It makes me feel like I've, I've, I've done something as a grandmother, whereas in here it's so hard, so it, it puts that connection and it makes us feel closer, you know. As many of these inmates have few chances to see their loved ones, recording these story times gives their children a permanent piece of themselves until they can reunite once again. Participants like Teresa are encouraged to read the story, but still find ways to personalize it with meaningful messages, whether it be in I love you, I'm here with you, or even a story that only the two may share. I always tell her to look at the moon. They, they look at the moon and I look at the moon and we were under the same moon. Mm -hmm. That's our, <laughs> our thing. And that love certainly comes across. This is read to you with love by Granny. I love you so much. Something they can hold in their hand and hear my voice at the same time. Yes. Yeah. A mother's voice, a sense of calming reassurance for a child working to navigate the world around them. Hearing the one phrase the two hold so near can make all of the difference. Um, I call him my silly goose. So at the beginning, I was like, this book is for my silly goose. Um. Lord bless and keep me close to you and hear my prayers my whole life through. Amen. Good night, my silly goose, Cameron. I love you with all my heart. Make sure you brush your teeth before bed and wake up bright and early with a smile on your face, ready to be a good boy, the best boy you can be. I love you always. And for some of these children, the sound of their mother's voices is all they may know. My first book is to my son. I actually gave birth to him in here almost a year ago. I have not seen him yet since he's been born. So the selection of the story is almost as significant as the personalized messages that may accompany it. Um, the wonder of you, because I have not met my son yet, I kind of wonder who he's going to be. So this Mother's Day, though these parents may be divided from their families by walls and barbed wire, they still have the ability to give the ultimate gift back to their children. A mother's voice is very important and crucial, critical to every child's life um, because they need us. They, they need us more than anything and even though we can't be there, it's, it's giving us 
the chance to be there. Justin Walsh, WIS News 10. I love this, a very special program to keep that connection between mothers and their children, especially ahead of Mother's Day, which Adam, like we've been saying, it's actually going to shape up to be a beautiful Mother's Day this weekend. Oh, it looks so phenomenal. The humidity is going down. We're going to have a lot of sunshine and we all can just get out and enjoy it. And I've got good news. The warning that we had earlier that Eric was talking about at seven o'clock that has been allowed to occur.